my lane. How's it going guys? My name is Carlton Dennis and welcome back to Taxes Made Simple. On today's show, I have with me a good friend. His name is Charlie Chang. I moved here about a year and a half ago, not really knowing whether or not I was gonna stay here long term. And as soon as I got into this apartment complex, I started realizing that I surrounded myself with the right people. Everyone in this apartment complex, they're eager, they're motivated to be better people. Everyone here wakes up early and everyone here is trying to, trying to grow themselves. And so I personally feel like Charlie is someone who I've aligned myself with because he's doing those same things. So I just wanted to interview Charlie today, bring him on to the show and we'll learn a little bit more about him. But first off, Charlie, tell me a little bit about what led you to the apartment complex that we're at now and talk a little bit more about what made you choose a luxury apartment complex. So um, I'm really big on your environment and that was one of the biggest things I was looking for when searching for an apartment. We moved here about one year ago and I was like, I need to live somewhere which has good energy. And this is the first one we toured mm -hmm. and the people we met like in the elevators, I was like, I think that's the one because everyone was young, everyone was like energetic and it just seemed like a good atmosphere where I could grow. Yeah. What's funny is every time that um, I was looking at different apartment complexes, I would always try to stop and talk to people. Be like, how do you like living here? Do you yeah. like it? How are the people here? What's one thing you would change about this place? Because I come to realize environment is so important. Um, early on in my career, I was living at um, my parents' place just to try to save money, starving college kid coming out of college. And then eventually I was able to afford to move into an apartment with my brother. Mm -hmm. And living with family is kind of still like living back at home with your parents, except you could just kind of have a little bit more freedom. But I was in an apartment and I had my own space. But as time went on, I started to feel uncomfortable. I was surrounded by a lot of, you know, kids and a lot of families and people who weren't really trying to grow and build businesses or do any form of investing. So the conversations I was having with these people were more around sports and things that I really didn't feel a whole lot of value around. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as I would come you know, this way more south towards South Orange County in Irvine and Costa Mesa, I started talking to more realtors and real estate investors and mortgage lenders and people who are in business and are creating things and YouTube stars. And that's how I ran into you. So you've been in this place now for a year and a half. You're growing your business. Tell us about how you got into your very first business and what led you to starting other businesses. So. I pretty much, so when I was in college, I was pre-med. I thought I was gonna go to medical school and stuff, but I just hated the thought of anything that had to do with like blood or being in the hospital. So I graduated college with a degree in psychobiology and no job offers or anything like that. Yeah. Um, I didn't get into med school. So I was, pretty, I was pretty much thrown into like entrepreneurship. I had to make it work, otherwise I just wouldn't be able to survive here. Yeah. So I started doing um, photography, I, I did modeling, I did videos, I did tutoring, just like a bunch of different things. Yeah. Um, and then slowly I just, it was a lot of trial and error on, of like what I wanted to do in my life. Yeah. And I just kept trying new different things. Um, some things would fail, which is totally fine, but some things stuck and that's kind of how I I built my like multiple streams of, of income. What would you say would be the first thing you committed to? Because I, I remember starting out um, in business, I had a bunch of different ideas. Mm -hmm. I was like, I wanted to be a fitness star, I wanted to sell t-shirts online. Same thing. I had a bunch of different yeah. ideas, but eventually I had to just commit to something. So yeah. what would you say was like the first thing you committed to or where did you find your first success? Was it in photography? Was it in modeling? Where did you find that first success? My first success was photography. So more specifically doing graduation shoots. Yeah. Um, at UCLA, it was super, it got super popular where like everyone would do a graduation shoot at the end of the year. Yeah. Uh, so come April, May, June, I would just be swamped with grad shoots. And I learned so much with, like, with that business. Um, I think my best year I did 150 fifty seven shoots 
in a couple months. Wow. So that was like nuts. <laughs> Taught me like the importance of hard work, customer like satisfaction. Um, yeah. And what age did you start doing your first entrepreneurial job, your, your own self-employed job? I would say I started photography in high school. Yeah. So I think I did a few paid jobs back then. Okay. But not too much. I'd say I started becoming more of like entrepreneur mindset after I graduated college and yeah. I was just thrown into like, like I need to be able to make money somehow. Yeah. Yeah. So you went to college, you said for medical, right? Yeah. You were going to go into being a doctor? Yeah. That's okay. what my parents wanted me to do. So your parents wanted you to become a doctor. So throughout college, what was it like? Did you feel like you enjoyed what you were learning or did you feel like you were just going through the classes to just get the degree? Yeah. Um, what you said second. It wasn't optimal. Like I wish I had a bigger personality. I wish I could tell myself, like Charlie, you don't have to do this just because you're like good at these science classes, right? Because yeah. um, I always didn't really enjoy it, and I always, my head was always all over the place. Like wanted to start my own businesses and like side hustles and stuff like that. So I kind of wish I listened to that inner thought more and just acted upon it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're a young person, you're like, what, only 28 years old, but you already can reflect back on moments in college where you wish you would have taken the leap of faith, believed in yourself a little bit more to start your businesses early. Yeah. And now you found success at the age of 28, but even looking back, I feel the same way too. It's funny that you were in medical, uh, studying medical fields and I was in kinesiology, mm -hmm. right? I went to school to study how the body moves and now I'm doing tax and accounting. Who would have thought? That's crazy. But you know, your road, your path can take you to so many different places. Yeah. And one of the main things that I told myself was that when I graduated college, I wasn't gonna say no to opportunities. So what kind of opportunities led to some of these other jobs that you have right now, such as um, your modeling and then um, running e-commerce? So I'd say for e-commerce, I was looking to buy a product that I needed for my room. Okay. So I looked on the Amazon and I was like, hey, there's not too many people selling this. And it seems extremely overpriced for what the item is. Yeah. Um, and at that, t at that time, I had like been researching ways to make money. So I'd heard about Amazon FBA. Yeah. So I was like, hey, this would be a good time for me to just start Amazon FBA. Yeah. And I, I do this thing where I don't really think to, I don't, I don't get analysis paralysis. So I, I do some initial research, but I don't spend too much time like nailing down all the details and like, you know, learning everything about it. Yeah. I prefer doing that after I start, like yeah. on the journey. Yeah. And I found that works really well for me. Yeah. Um, it's led to a lot of opportunities that I like never thought I'd have. I love that you brought that up. And I feel like that's a trait that most successful people, successful people have, right? Mm -hmm. They commit to something and then they figure it out later. Yeah. Something figure I learned from, from Grant, Grant Cardone, right? Commit now, figure it out later. So many people get analysis paralysis. They get caught up in their thoughts. I need to have this perfect scene. I need to sell the perfect product. Mm -hmm. I need to market it perfectly. It needs to have the perfect branding and trademark. And I have to have the perfect business structure for it. You need to just get started. And the inability to take action is what holds people back from being what they want to become. 100%. And so I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. What do you feel like is some of the challenges you're facing now? Now that you are bringing in what? Eight streams of income now. What, what do you feel like is a challenge for you? I'm um, just seeing where I want to expand and focus my efforts. Um, I don't think YouTube is going to last forever, so I'm trying to think of ways that I can take my audience and build some type of business where you know I don't have to be present in front of a screen right. um, or in front of the camera. So I I'm trying to build some type of like online education platform and just. You know, diving into that is very scary. I'm working on my first course right now. Nice and. You know, like, like I said before, like I just started doing it without thinking too much about it and right. I'm just figuring it out. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. You seem pretty motivated about it. Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah. Well, fun. if I were to say one thing that I know about you is that you're very humble and soft-spoken, but being the person that you are right now, being able to speak on YouTube and being able to connect with different entrepreneurs, how were you able to get over some of those hurdles um, of being maybe even shy or, you know, having some intrinsic yeah. qualities? Yeah, I'm super shy, um, definitely an introvert, so it is hard, and you know, but that actually helped me out. So what I mean by that is, I was like, I'm, I'm so shy, I can't talk in front of cameras, I can't talk in front of an audience, Yeah. so I need to find a way to get better at that. 
Yeah. So I was like, I think I can do YouTube videos. I think that's like a good like gateway yeah. to actually being in front of like live audiences and stuff. Um, so I was like, I'm gonna start my YouTube channel. I'm gonna start making content, and hopefully, if I do it more, I know I can get better, and I know that it's gonna help me out like in everything in life. Yeah, yeah. So you got in front of a camera and said, I'm just gonna start filming myself and as time goes along, I have to get better at this. Yeah, you should see my first videos. They're so bad. <laughs> like, I was watching them the other day. And yeah. It, it, like, and that's what people don't understand. It's, it's just the start. It's a marathon, right? It's not a race. I remember looking at my first tax video I did. I literally sat a phone up um, vertical without twisting the phone sideways to yeah. landscape mode. And I found out after filming the video for five minutes that I couldn't post it onto YouTube the way I wanted to post it onto YouTube. But guess what? I posted it anyway. So I worked so hard. I put so much passion into that video. And I said, you know what? I'm going to continue to create more. Yeah. Let's roll. Yeah. And I think the, the, that feeling I get where I just have to commit and say, let's keep going is what keeps leading to more and more success. Yeah. And perfection, like, I think perfection kills a lot of people. Yeah. Obviously, it's good to have perfection, but... Um, if your standards are so high for your first video or your first blog post or your first product, then you know that you just might not get started. And I think that's the hardest part, mm -hmm. getting started. Um, and then I feel like most people can figure it out as they do it. Yeah, agreed. So you know that I meet with hundreds and hundreds of real estate investors and stock investors. Tell me a little bit about your investing, what your background is in investing and um, the type of investors you may deal with. Um, so personally myself, I, I'm a real estate broker, so right now I have one real estate investment property nice. here in Los Angeles. Um, and then besides that, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out ways that I can invest in properties maybe out of state or maybe in California, it's really expensive here, so yeah. it's tough. But besides real estate, I also invest in stocks and a little bit of crypto. Good, okay, yeah. so you believe in diversifying. Yeah. So most people have this idea, because I talk to real estate investors every single day, that mm -hmm. it's extremely, extremely hard to get into real estate. Tell us about how it was for you getting into that first property. Um, so it was good, but I had help from my parents. Yeah. So basically what they did was they fronted um, all the money to buy that first property. Okay. And then we did a cash out refinance after renovating it. So my sister and I paid for all the renovations, uh, we did a cash out refinance to pay most of that money back to them. Yeah. Um, and now we just owe them a little bit of money. Yeah. Um, so I'd say that I'm like super fortunate to have parents that are real estate investors and they were like, Charlie, Jennifer, you guys need to start investing in real estate yeah. like, as soon as you can. Um, so that, that's how I got started. I love that you said that your parents are real estate investors because my parents are real estate investors mm -hmm. and I personally think it's a part of the reason why I'm a tax strategist now. I still remember graduating college and I had whew, about $11,000 in my bank account at the time, which mm -hmm. when you graduate college, you kind of feel like that's somewhat a lot. It yeah. really is not a lot. It's a lot. That's but right. Carlton thought it was a lot. Yeah. So I had this idea that when I graduated college, I was going to go travel Europe and okay. enjoy myself. I was going to go travel to Milan and then go to different parts of the beaches in Greece, right? So my parents told me, Carlton, when you graduate, that money is going into your first investment property. And I was like, how? It's my money. And I was like, I'm going to go I'm gonna go to Europe. I worked really hard. I deserve to go travel. My mom just said, Carlton, no. When the, when the time comes, that money will be taken. We're going to go buy, help you so buy your property. Mm -hmm. So I graduated college. And sure enough, as I was literally mapping out an, a trip with my friends on Expedia, I went to go pay for it, and there was $0 on my card. My parents had moved the entire $11,000 I had in that account into their account to help, no me buy, to help me buy my first duplex. Okay. And that was how I got into my first investment property. Wow. I had to be told that I needed to invest. And after I got into the investment and was able to reap the benefits of the income, the taxes, and the appreciation, did I finally say, okay, I am a real estate investor. Mm -hmm. I believe in real estate. Right? Yeah. Someone had to yank the money out of my account and say, go drop it into this and sit there and be patient. 
because that's what it takes to be an investor. It takes patience and it takes a little bit of fear knowing that you're giving up some of your money for a bigger play. Yeah, and I love how your parents held you accountable and yeah. like forced you to do that. Yeah. Because otherwise like a brand new college graduate is not gonna want to spend all their money on a property, right? Yeah. I'd rather blow it on like fun stuff. Fun stuff, yeah. travel, clothes, right? Yeah. At that time, you're not really thinking about how can I compound interest and multiply and have multiple streams of income? Mm -hmm. But now at the ages of 27 and 28, we wake up thinking about that almost every single day, yeah. right? And we are doing everything we can now as entrepreneurs to market ourselves, including investing um, in ourselves, in our clothing, in our vehicles, which I want to talk to you about. Yeah. Um, I know that I purchased a Porsche about a year and a half ago and you drive a really nice car. Tell us a little bit more about your car and how you financed it. Yeah, so I leased a 2019 uh, BMW i8 Roadster. Um, it's always a car, like I remember the first time I saw the i8, it was like probably 2013 or 2014, I was like, that car is so sick. Yeah. Um, but I leased it because I wanted, well I was like, I'm gonna spend five or $600 on a car anyways. Yeah. I might as well double that and get a car that I can use to you know, sort of like pimp out like as marketing. Yeah. Um, so that was my big intention with this car. I knew that it could help me attract attention. And a lot of this idea was from Albert Preciado, who we both follow. Yes. Um, you know, he has his Ferraris. And I, I remember following him and being like, being like, wow, like this is actually working well for him. Yeah. So I was like, this isn't something that most people would take the leap on. Yeah. Um, but I just made that uncomfortable leap. I'm super frugal, so getting that car was a big stretch for me, but it's definitely paid off. Yeah. Yeah. So I follow Albert Preciado too, and I remember going to Albert's Driven event, and Albert has about three or four Ferraris that he was jumping in and out of on stage, and he was saying, I use these like strippers, I use these cars like strippers, yeah. I want them being used every single day, I drive them, I park them where they can be seen, I want attention, my cars are my marketing, how many red Ferraris do you see mm -hmm. every single day? Yeah. And as soon as he said that, how many red Ferraris do you see every single day? It, it, something like a light bulb snapped off and then something told me, wow, my goal is to be more omnipresent, right? To have more attention where people are thinking and knowing about Carlton when they think tax strategy. Yeah. And having a brand is extremely important to getting recognition. 100%. And so me purchasing a Porsche, aligning myself with Porsche and, and my vehicle, not only has it been fun, has it contributed to my happiness, it's directly allowed me to gain more income and it's allowed me to save more money on taxes because I leased it to my corporation. So leasing cars, right? Part of the reason why me and Charlie lease cars is because when you're leasing a car, you're putting a less down payment down, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You're using OPM, other people's money, to cover the other half of the car with your down payment. And then when you're leasing a car, guys, it's a depreciating asset. So if I were to buy a car and write it off through my business, I still have to keep it, even if I've already depreciated it for five years. I have to keep the car and possibly resell it back to go get another car. Yeah. Whereas with a lease, I can drive a luxury vehicle, get a write off every single year for the car payments, the car insurance, the tires, the gas, and then in three years, I can just go get another brand new car, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So for entrepreneurs, it appeals more to our lifestyle, especially when we're trying to grab attention. Yeah. Absolutely. Charlie, you purchased a BMW i8 Roadster. Obviously, you wanted attention. Tell me how attention has been able to directly help you in your business. So much. So, I will say that the first month or two I got the car, um, I, I was on a podcast, and I was on that podcast in large part because of the car. And from that podcast, I got a new real estate client, and they purchased the property, and that instantly paid for the lease for both years, um, for the entire lease. So it's already made me more money than I've spent on it. Um, and it's also really helped me with my social media. Uh, I'm sure you've seen this too with your social media. Good cars always help. Yes. It seems like kind of weird to think about, but people like good cars and we're young. So I think having a good car kind of gives you a li little bit of credibility. Right? Absolutely. And I used my car so much on TikTok to kind of get my initial big audience um, and then what I did was I took TikTok, I put call to actions at the end of my videos and stuff and on my profile and sort of moved them over to YouTube because that's where I want 
my main personal brand to live. Um, I think YouTube is like the best platform in the world. Um, and there's so much stuff you can do once you build a good YouTube channel. You can create new opportunities for businesses. You can like, you know, multiple streams of income from YouTube. It's just really amazing. I love that you brought up YouTubers because I work with a lot of YouTubers yeah. and YouTubers don't understand that a lot of their personal expenses, the things that they typically spend their money on, their car, their cell phone, going and eating out, can become business expenses by leveraging the tax codes. People can probably save so much money. And they can save tons of money. It's more than just having an LLC. Yeah. It's structuring your whole business the right way. And so YouTubers are at an advantage with the tax codes. It's cool though, because YouTube is, it sort of blends with your personal life, right? A little bit. Yeah. So a lot of that stuff that you, might buy anyways, you can write off, right? Exactly. Yeah, you're that's the expert right. on that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, saving money on taxes, that is something I need to learn more of. Right? It's funny that you said that your vehicle brought you attention. My vehicle brought me attention within the first month that I purchased it. Mm -hmm. I closed my first $100 million client the first month I had my Porsche. And the okay. only reason I closed the deal was because when I walked the client back out to the car, he saw what car I had. Like, I'm connect. a 27 year old tax strategist looking at an 85 year old's tax returns who makes a hundred million dollars and telling him I'm going to be the one to, tell, to help save you money on your taxes. Best believe I need to come correct. When I was walking him out because I walk people all the way out to the car, okay. he got to see my car yeah. and he turned to me and said, wow, you're on to something. Glad I came by here. Nice. We've been doing his taxes every single year. Man. I think that's super smart. And it's it's just, I, I look back at it and I'm like, wow, should I have, should I have ever gotten a car? Should I ever gotten a two-seater? And, and I think about that moment. I closed a $100 million client was able to cover that car. The ROI for, if, if you market it right, if you use it correctly, the ROI for a car is very good. Exponential. Yeah, exponential. Absolutely. But you, but you, have, you can't just get a nice car and expect it to like help you in your businesses, right? You have to present it in a certain way. So when you walk your clients out, I think yeah. it's super smart. When you put on social media, it's super smart. Absolutely. Yeah. So you, you help a lot of people with their investing. I see your videos on YouTube, on Instagram. Mm -hmm. What do you feel like people our age, so like millennials, and let's just say in between the ages of 21 and 28, yeah. what should we be doing with our money right now? Should we be hoarding cash? Or do you think we should be trying to push a lot of that money into the market? Or should all of us just go and get a real estate? So, I think the market's a little bit crazy right now. Yeah. So I'm pulling more cash than I would like. But I still think that putting money consistently into the stock market is a good move. Maybe not like all your money. Have some money just, you know, in case an opportunity comes up or like some market crashes or you find a real estate deal. Um, so I would say don't put all your money in the stock market right now. But be prepared to, because I, I I'm really big on like long term investing in index funds, um, just building wealth like that. Good, and I'm a big believer in long term investing as well. I believe in real estate primarily, mainly mm -hmm. because I'm a tax strategist, yeah. right? I know all the tax benefits. I follow Manny Koshman. One of Manny's uh, big things that he states is buy low, sell high, right? Yeah. But that just works with any type of investing, right? Right now, there's so many. Robin Hood traders that are jumping on and buying all these Apple and Tesla stocks because there's all yeah. these stock splits because yeah. there's so much hype and then there's so much media telling you, hey, this is what's going on. So mm -hmm. of course, as a giddy investor without a plan, you're jumping on whatever you see in the news, right? Yeah. But most in experienced investors, they have a plan. They're constantly putting money into the market or they have a strategy where they're buying low and they're selling high. That's why education is so important. Right? You're absolutely right. It's like right. stuff that most people don't know about and that's why they don't invest in real estate because yeah, if you know the tax laws, if you know like just how good an investment can be, yeah. it, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. So you said that you know most people don't invest because they don't have the education and I can agree with that, but where do you go to look for the education? What is the yeah. book to read? What's the course to take? What would you say had gotten you to a place to say, you know what, I'm comfortable, let me start spending some of my money on investing? Yeah. So, well, I started investing without knowing too much about it because that's what I do. I just jump into things. But there's so much information out there. Um, I'd say YouTube is a great place to start. There are so many very, very smart and successful like investors that 
make videos on YouTube. And it's pretty cool because you're getting all this information for free. It's like a it's like a one on one mentorship sort of, right? Yeah. But you can just view it whenever you want. Um, yeah, YouTube is a great resource. And I love it. Yeah. I like YouTube. And I would also say for the first time real estate investor, mm -hmm. you have got to get yourself through the Rich Dad series. If you right. haven't gone yeah. through Rich Dad, Poor Dad's guide to investing and taking the cash flow quadrants, you're kind of behind in your understanding of money. Right? Because it's a totally different mindset. It's a totally different mindset. Once you understand how money is taxed, you're gonna go put yourself in the vehicle that's least taxed, yep. right? Whether it's real estate or it's investments in the stock market, you're gonna go play that game rather than the W-2 game where you're always being taxed until um uh, you die. Right? 100%, 100%. So that's what those books did for me. It gave me clarity. I felt like I was living my life like this, thinking, how in the hell am I ever going to get rich? How do people do it? Because if I keep putting money into a 401k, I'm not, I'm not seeing when it's happening. Yeah. But then as I started reading and taking more information on YouTube, it opened up my mind. I see how people get themselves into big businesses, into big investments. It's because they're seeking out information first yeah. and then they're taking action yeah. on the information. That's powerful. Knowledge then action. Knowledge coupled with action, mm -hmm. right? No analysis paralysis, because that will be the difference between you getting yourself where you want to go and being mediocre. Yeah. And I'll say like reading was one thing that completely changed my life. I only started reading maybe a year and a half ago. I went on a two week trip to Vietnam and Thailand. Yeah. And then when I got back, I was like, all right, I'm going to change everything about my life. So I did the morning routine. I started reading every single day. Yeah cold showers, all that stuff. And you know, in that last year and a half, that's when my life has changed the most. Like, yeah. Exponential, crazy. Never really expect, uh, like expected it or anything. Yeah. One of your very popular videos on YouTube and on your Instagram was how you tripled your income in less than three years. Tell us about those rituals that you have that led to your success. So they don't seem like they would do too much, but they just do. Cause it's like all these small things that just change your mindset and change your trajectory for the day. So I, I always say the morning is so important because it sets the tone for the rest of your day. Um, so what I do in the morning is I wake up, glass of water, um, about 20 minutes of reading. I write my affirmations, my visualizations for the day. And then also, um, did I say what I'm grateful for? No, yeah, okay. you so should. This is all from The Miracle Morning, which is a book that like really inspired me. One of the most life-changing books that I've probably ever read. Yeah. yeah. So it's so funny that most entrepreneurs have all read some of the similar books. The Miracle mm -hmm. Morning was a life-changing book for me. Yeah. Untethered Soul, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I would have to say those would be some of the top books. What would you say is probably your number one book that has led to some of your success or that you would recommend anyone needs to read? Well, I would probably say the most life-changing book I've read is The Miracle Morning because it just made me want to get up early and yeah. that just changed everything. Um, another really good book that I would say I think a lot of people should read is The Compound Effect. The Compound Effect. Um, and I just, like, all these small actions which don't seem like they may be getting you anywhere, they're actually working all together and allowing you to be successful. And it's really like a graph like, like that. Yeah. Where you see slow progress at the start. You know, other people that aren't doing these things, um, they're not that much different from you. Yeah. But then at a certain point, it's like all those effects start to compound and then you like and take off. Skews. Yeah, and I feel like that's sort of where my life is right now. Yeah. People are like, dude, how did he get so successful? There, there are no overnight successes unless you hit the lottery. Right? It's 10, 15, and 25 years successes. And I feel like that book, The Compound Effect, speaks to, to those actions. Yeah. Those small, incremental actions that you take every single day that when you eventually turn around and you look back, you're like, whoa, how did I get on this mountain? Yeah. I didn't even know I can get up this high. Yeah. But you've been taking those actions and you stopped looking back mm -hmm. and kept looking forward. Yeah. I, yeah my life has been like, pretty flat for quite some time, like I'm 28. I've been out of college for seven years almost. Yeah. Um, no, I wasn't doing that well the first five years, but recently that's when it just really changed. And I think it's like, just shows that 
life can be like that. Yeah. yeah. And you said, um, you know, the Miracle Morning was important for you because it helped change your life. It helped lead you to tripling your income, which most people have a hard time doing. Mm -hmm. um, but waking up early, you wake up at 4.30, 4 o'clock? Not that early. I wake up normally 5.30 to 6. 5.30 to 6. Okay, got it. So you're an early riser. Now, most people understand that I wake up early like you. I wake up around 4 or 4.30. People ask, do you need to wake up early to be successful? I say absolutely not. The reason being is, is success can come in a number of different forms. Mm -hmm. You can be successful and touch a mouse key maybe only five times a week just because you're a day trader, you're extremely successful doing day trading. Yeah. So success can come in a number of different ways. But what I've known and what, what's, what history has shown me is most successful people, at least 80% of them, are early risers. Yeah. So what is your thought on that? I don't think you have to wake up early to see success, but I do think that the act of waking up early gives you more opportunity to see success. And that's mm -hmm. why you see a lot of successful people wake up early. Um, it's not really about what time you wake up, but it's about waking up when there's like not too many distractions and then having some type of routine yeah. that you do every single morning. So I think, I think you can wake up at 8, 10, whatever, and have some type of morning routine and still see a lot of success. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are more... I'm sure people are much more productive at night, some people. Some people are much more productive in the morning, so yeah. it really depends on your like personality and what works for you. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy that you say that because I know some entrepreneurs that are just night owls. I, I know e-commerce people who are selling amazing products on Amazon that are cranking on the laptops late at night, yeah. and in the morning you won't see them in the morning because they're night yeah. owls and they're successful at night. Yeah. Success can come in a number of different ways. You don't have to be a morning person you can be a you person, however you like to wake mm -hmm. up. But one thing that needs to show up, you need to have commitments. What are your rituals in the morning? When you wake up, when the eyelids pop open, what is the first thing that you are doing? Are you reaching for yourself when you're reaching for Instagram? Are you reaching for a Bible or reaching for a notebook or reaching for your affirmations, right? Because setting the tone in the morning is so important for the rest of your day and the life you're going to live yeah. every day. And that's what entrepreneurs need to know. And how you do one thing is how you do everything. Absolutely. How you do one thing is how you do everything. So how do you approach your day, right? Do you approach your day with the mindset of, uh, I'm in a hurry, I just need to get to work, I need to get just a bite of bacon in and then, and then go? Or do you approach your morning saying, I'm going to plan this thing out. I'm going to wake up a little bit early. I'm going to write some of my things down that I want to get done today. I'm going to write some of the things down I want to get done in my life. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pray on family, friends. And, and others, right? That's and then so I'm gonna go ahead and move in to the day. That's like planning instead of reacting, right? Exactly. You wanna, you wanna be in control of your day, you, just, you don't wanna react to everything that's happening in your day because that's that's not optimal. And entrepreneurs wanna be in control. Mm -hmm. Why do you think entrepreneurs constantly are investing their money, right? They want to create more money so that they don't have to work, right? That's yeah. the whole purpose of investing, right? Yeah. Is to be able to live off passive income so you can buy your time back, right? When you buy your time back, you're giving yourself more control to do the things that you want to mm -hmm. do. Waking up early allows you to be in more control of your life. You can control what happens in the morning, what you're going to do first, how you're going to eat, what, how you're going to work out, your mentality for the day. But if you wake up at 7 o'clock and you have to be at work at 8 o'clock, where is your mindset at? Oh my gosh, I got to be at work at 8 o'clock. Oh my gosh, did I send out the email I was supposed to send out yesterday? Oh my gosh, what's going to happen once I get into work? I hope my computer doesn't explode. Mm -hmm. You have no time to create a life for yourself. You're living a life, not creating a life. Okay. And that's the difference. I want to create a life. I don't want to just live in a life that's mediocre to yeah. me. I believe in extraordinary. And extraordinary comes from committing to creating a life. And it'll lead back to your rituals and those habits, morning habits. Yes. Yeah, man. This has been fun, Charlie. I really enjoyed this. Is there any last things that you want to say? I just want to say thank you so much for having me on your show. Absolutely. It's been a blast talking to you. Um, I learned a lot. Absolutely. You guys can follow Charlie at, at Charlie Chang and visit him on his YouTube channel at, at Charlie Chang. We're out.